And the guys on the bench are really enjoying this one following the long 12-day stretch where St. John's had to think about that loss to Towson State in the opener of the NIT. I got John starting a new streak tonight. They had won 23 in a row at home before they lost to Towson State. Had won 62 in a row against non-conference opponents dating back to March of 81 against Alabama. So they're starting a new home court win streak tonight. It begins at 1. Seton Hall coming up. Jumping right into league action. I saw Bruce Hamburger here, assistant coach of the Pirates scouting. They just escaped uh, St. Peter's the other night. Fans get much, uh, much too uh, authoritative on early games and what it means. 75-44, 46 seconds to play. And Lee Green comes up with the loose ball off the Doyle miss, and he draws the foul. And Shawnell still wanted to pass. <laughs> He is a big character, you know. He has been gregarious since his senior year in high school. Well, he says he wants an NBA career or he wants a career in television mm -hmm. as a commentator or a producer. Personally, I think he ought to be a producer. Yeah. But he uh, played in the high school championship game, which we covered against, was it Jamal Mashburn? All hollows against uh, Cardinal Hayes. Nash was pretty impressive. I said he'd be a pretty good player. You remember that? Yeah. Pretty good judgment, right? <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. You can't afford but so many misses. Lee Green has been all over the place in his appearance. Three points in the game. 77-44. Tuberty hitting the off-balance jumper. 24 seconds to go. Lee Green, uh, one of the players that Brian Mahoney's thinking about. In a Daytona for three. Bain tips it up. McLeod with the foul. He puts it in. St. John still pressing. But, uh, Nine seconds left. May not thrill Jack Rowan. And a three-pointer by Chad Brown. With four seconds to go, the inbound feed to Mataratona. He fires for three. Off the mark. And the walk-on just missing at the buzzer. So for St. John's, their first victory of the year. A solid second half over the undermanned lines of Columbia. And the final 79 to 49. It appears the commitment by Brian Mahoney to play more people, to play up-tempo without sacrificing the tenacious St. John's defense is paying off. Columbia, not, uh, not an opponent to really evaluate. This is a young Columbia team. No match for stronger St. John's. And uh, I think uh, we'll know a little bit more about the Redmen when they encounter Seton Hall. It's going to be a long season, and I think this team's going to get better and better. I like their balance. I like their depth. 22 points, 16 boards for Sean L. Scott as the Redmen win in a round. We'll be back. And the victory, their first of the season, heading into Saturday's game against the Seton Hall Pirates. Sean L. Scott, the story tonight, bucking a solid all-around game for him. It really was. Uh, James Scott, that time we went Scott to Scott. We went Brown to Brown. We had a lot of combinations. But that man was a giant tonight. Good dump down pass. James Scott, we reverse the pass and catch. Off the iron, and that's what he was, a force on the board. Yes, it was not a powerful Columbia team, but 22 points and 16 boards, following his 24 points and 12 boards. Arrow and plenty of will get a chance to score. Carpenter replaces Cosgrove. Lee Green, for the most part, played solidly. Well, Van Bredikoff, who uh, had been the victim of a Red Auerbach victory cigar, he gets uh, Brian Mahoney's version. The walk-ons or the capper. Be nice to see these kids score. His assistants, Joe Dunleavy, Tiny Green, Joe Featherston. I know they believe there's better days ahead for this young team. And Darius Burton is one of the reasons why they need to be encouraged. This is walk-on Mataratona. Outside to walk on small. Crowd is rooting for 
one of the walk-ons to get a hoop. Small is a transfer from Syracuse, and Mitch Taratona is a transfer from Westbrook College. Small pops. He hits it! A three for the walk-on. The biggest hand of the day from this crowd. He's from August Martin High School in Jamaica, New York. 5'9", 160, and nothing but net for him. <laughs> Tom Bain's working awfully hard. He's learning his lessons uh, well from Chanel Scott. I think Brian Mahoney would like to see that ball go down inside to Bain a little bit more. He could give him some quality minutes, especially as they head into the Big East. Chris Parsons missing the free throw. For the Redmen, 14 for Sean L. Scott, 10 for Charles Midlin, 10 for Rashawn McLeod, 9 for Derek Brown. And for Hofstra, 9 points for Schaefer, 6 for Mavrukas, 7 for Cosgrove, 7 for Parsons, 7 for Ogden. Under a minute to play. The Taratona. Outside James Scott. Beckett. Followed up and in by Bain. There's your man. If he works as hard on his body in the offseason as Chanel Scott, he'll be ready to step in next year. 30 points, St. John's lead. And Mahoney has gotten a lot of different people in the game and given them some important minutes. Small's lead pass from a Taratona too far. He uh, is not a candidate as a wide receiver. <laughs> Lots of hustle, but I don't think that's his spot. He might get one chance to shoot. Sean Titus hits it. 15 seconds to go. James Scott with it. He hands to Materatona. Back to Scott. Scott wants this kid to shoot. He's giving it back to him. Materatona. He's in trouble. He dishes off the small. <laughs> and that is it. Well, they tried hard. And James Scott was very unselfish there at the end. He sure was. That, uh, the attitude of the uh, players of St. John, very unselfish. Uh, it was a difficult game today. Uh, he never really in question after about the first 10 minutes. And, and uh, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't that well played. But the, the, the chemistry of the team you can see developing. There'll be, uh, there'll, be, there'll be days when it will be really tested and they're not very far away. So St. John's a winner, 70 to 42, as they capture the lap chick once again. And this one never really in doubt. St. John's taking the halftime lead by 13 and then just opening things up in the second half. That one definitive run. And then Sean L. Scott down the stretch taking over at Butch Van Bredikoff's club. Gets beaten pretty badly today. But they were outmatched. The final 70 to 42. We'll be right back. Their 19 straight Lapchick tournament title. They are now third bench for the Redmen. <laughs> Derek Brown with the rebound. Out it goes to Mo Brown. Jonel Scott turns and hits. Again, the big man at 6'11, 250, running the floor. And when your big guy runs the floor, even if you got a 20-something lead, you give it to him. Good pass by Mo Brown. Yes, it was. 19 and 11 for Sean L. Scott. He's around a season numbers. St. John's still playing extremely hard. Scott missing the alley-oop, but I say the players should come out now. You bet. It's at this point in the game with a little fatigue that those injuries happen. Ryan Hunter gets the bucket for the Rams. 18 points, a terrific game for Hunter. Mullis with 22. Fordham is going to be fighting for the Patriot League crown this year. There's no doubt about it with Colgate and a very good Holy Cross team. Time out on the court, a minute six to play. And St. John's with the 23-point lead. The refs are going to send the players back onto the court. Brian just called that timeout not to rub it in on Fordham. He wanted to get some players into the game. And since he called the timeout, it's his prerogative. So he just sent him right back out. And uh, this was certainly not any strategical deal. He just wanted to get his bench in. He got Bain in the ball game and also the walk-on Brad Small. 
Now the officials are sending the teams back to their benches. Brian Mahoney now with uh, not much to talk about except uh, guys, uh, we made it an adventure for a little while, but it uh, uh, looks like we got one solid away here. I want you to have a nice Saturday night and uh, don't get hurt because we got Niagara coming up next week before the festival. ECAC Holiday Festival, the Chemical Bank Tournament, Temple, Georgia Tech, St. John's FDU, Monday, 7 o'clock right here on MSG and along the Prime Network as well. Expecting a couple of good games on Monday and on Wednesday. Temple, Georgia Tech, what a way to open a tournament. Georgia Tech is playing well. I believe they've won five straight. This is Brad Small, the walk-on. And the rebound pulled down by Connie Mack. So an old backyard rivalry. And for 34 minutes or so, it was a heck of a game. And then St. John's just exploded on a 24 run, and that was it. Brain is fouled by Midland. Rob Baxter, nice pass that time. He's coming off of two good games. He's still not really shooting well, but uh, starting to feel comfortable in that role. Brian Mahoney's victory cigar enters the game. Bill Materatona is in. Archbishop Malloy walk on. It was 64 to 60, and then it went to 84 64. Harry Robinson handling our numbers as always for time. And Paul McHale handling our stats in the truck. Andrea Salamita from the ECAC. We thank all of them for their support. With our double header at the Nassau Coliseum. 20 seconds to go. Baxter missing. The Taratona with the rebound. He gets the small. He hits. Second game in a row that the walk-on Brad Small is connected. This one a three-point field goal. Five seconds left. Now this game will end up being a lot more of a blowout than it really was. It was hotly contested, a game of spurts. St. John's, better defense, better players. The Redmen of St. John's improved to five and two. The Rams of Fordham dropped to two and three. St. John's atoning for last year's loss at Rose Hill with the 98-72 victory. James Scott with 26. Sean L. Scott with 19. And Charles Midland with 14. Rashawn McLeod with 12. Derek Brown with 10 for St. John's. Again, the experimentation in the backcourt for St. John's, but that front court is coming along fine. Rashawn McLeod coming in uh, to his own as a freshman. Derek Brown looking much more at home in the backcourt. The St. John's team is growing with confidence. They're going to be tough. Derek Mullis, 22 to pace Fordham. Ryan Hunter had 18. And we'll be right Just back. that man, Al LaFalbo, who coached at Fairleigh Dickinson from 1969 to 1980 and is now the assistant coach with the St. John's Redmen. One of the great defensive coaches that I've ever been around. He knows only three words in life. Ball, you, man. It was a big help to Bobby Knight at, uh, at West Point. Uh, commuted, uh, helped with the defense up there and, and was the high school coach of one of my former assistants, Ruby Brown, and Ruby still carries many of uh, Al Lavalbo's theories and uh, the man has influenced a lot of people in basketball. One of those old warriors. And he's still, I talked to him before the game tonight, you would have thought it was a, a Final Four game. He was up, he was fired. Foul called as Clive Anderson goes to the basket. Scoring summary for this game, James Scott is out of there with 26 to lead St. John's. Sean L. Scott with 17. Carl Beckett with 13 points. That's a career high. For Fairleigh Dickinson, 16 for Tanner Robinson. 12 for Antoine Dasher. 10 for Pollard. 9 for Anderson. Ryan Mahoney already thinking about Wednesday night. 
in the Yellow Jackets of Georgia. I think it's going to be an interesting test for St. John's this early in the season. And if they get back Derek Brown, I think they've got a shot. I think that's crucial. They're going to have a very difficult time handling Travis Best without Derek Brown, offensively and defensively. And a couple of walk-ons are on the floor for St. John's. It's always fun for the crowd to respond. As Bill Mataratona and Brad Small have gotten a chance to get a bucket and the student section coming alive. St. John's gets better support here in Madison Square Garden than they do at Alumni Hall. Students get in and, uh, and uh, gets, put some life in it. By the way, those are basketballs on the tie of Brian Mahoney. And those are courtesy of Malik Seeley, the former Redmond, second leading scorer in the history of the school. Now with the Indiana Pacers, Malik, a very fine design artist. And he gave Brian that tie. I hope that's not a violation. I was just going to yeah. say, uh, uh, we better check into that. This guy's out in Kansas City. Uh, Brian probably bought it, Buck. For more than it was worth, and uh, they'll take uh, two games away from St. John's. Oh, well, he just definitely kidding. bought it, okay. Here's Mataratona, out to small. This guy can hit. He's got seven points in the year in three late situations. Deshaun McLeod, oh, is he smooth. 24 seconds left, eight points from McLeod. Oh, a nice low-look pass by Elijah Allen inside. 17 seconds to go, so St. John's will improve to 7-2. and two. Brian Mahoney relaxing with the comfortable tie. <laughs> Roddy Rutledge and... George Felton, the assistant coaches, next to him. We already saw Al Labalba. It's quite a staff, which has been together for a long time. George Felton, of course, very close friends, former teammate. But Bobby Crimmins was quoted today as saying he was pulling for Georgia Tech, so he got his wish. They were teammates at South Carolina, and George, a former head coach there at South Carolina, now the assistant to Brian Mahoney. And so I'm sure on Wednesday night that uh, all that affection will evaporate. And the game will be decided in the rectangle. 15 seconds to go. Small drive to Mataratona. Oh, he almost put it in. McLeod, he hit everything he throws up. 1.3 seconds remaining. And that is it. So it wasn't pretty. But St. John's definitively taking over in the second half and coasting to an 83-59 victory over Fairleigh Dickinson University to run their record to 7-2. And, and now they'll meet Georgia Tech in the championship for the Chemical Bank ECAC Holiday Festival on Wednesday. Temple will be taking on Fairleigh Dickinson in the third place game. Leading the way, James Scott for St. John with 26. Sean L. Scott adding 17 and breaking the 1,000 point mark for his collegiate career. So we'll take a short break. Well, it's Super Sunday and it's time for a garden party. The Minnesota Golden Gophers. Ranked 17th in the country, challenge the St. John's Redmond. Oh, here's Snowy New York. We'll get right back to you after the beat. All class move by Stevie. Luckily, there's only 59.9 left on the clock. And Ryan Mahoney going to make a couple of changes here. They get a couple of their walk ons in. Brad Small, number 11, and Bill Matericona. Come into the game for St. John's, replacing James Scott and Lee Green. Well, everyone's getting into the action tonight, and then obviously the Johnnies are in a good frame of mind coming off this game. Down behind misses. Davis tried to follow him. John McLeod with the rebound. Picked off by McCormick. Quick pop is good. You can see where he's got that exactly. two-guard stroke. Yeah, he's got it. He really should be on the two-guard. And, of course, Len has to use him at the point spot. McLeod, Brad Small. Take the shot for three. Yeah. What the three. Brad 
small. Boy, they'll be on him tonight. And what took it. you so long? <laughs> he, he wasn't sure, should I? Then he just said, hey, I might as well get it up there. And he was so open, he couldn't believe it. <laughs> Davis battling inside against McLeod and a foul. Brad Small with the bucket for the Redmond. Well, you love the games when everyone you win it and when everyone gets into the action. Of course, you see the Miami bench right there heading back to Miami after this ball game. But they've had a tough evening. They've had a tough year, but they keep battling, and Len Lennon Hamilton is a battler, I'll tell you right now. He will keep this team going, and they will battle, and he will have some success. Tonight's game has been produced by Paul Carlson and directed by Larry Cavallino. Boys on the case once again, giving you the pictures and everything. Outstanding job this evening. Went beyond the call. Great effort, by him. Tom Bain loses. And the Shambi High scores. Shambi High has come in firing and very active. High with the foul. And so what happens just after the whistle press threw up a three and went in, but it doesn't count. The final 8.9 seconds here at St. John's. John McLeod, played for Bob Hurley Sr. over at St. Anthony's High School in New Jersey. Had some good moments for St. John's. Played particularly well two weeks ago against Austin College at Madison Square Garden. They certainly did, and you saw Brian Mahoney has to be relieved with tonight's effort, and obviously a very fine win for his ball club. Seconds. Hello. Yeah, there's an explosion. What a play. What a pass. Some behind. Up high to finish it off. There will be a couple of good things to talk about. Ed Small runs out the final seconds. It's here. Tyler shoots it, but it'll be too late. And a final with St. John's winning it by the final of 78 to 63. St. John's Redmond's now four and seven in the Big East. Miami 0 and 11. Along with Don Perno, this is Dave Sims. Thanks for joining us. Our final score, St. John's wins it over Miami, 78 to 63. The proceeding has been a Big East Conference Television Network production. Have a good evening, everyone. This calls for some special strategy, so we're going deep inside Computer Command Central here at the Redmond Basketball Program. Alex Evans, administrative assistant. He's a whiz. Me, I'm a computer idiot. Alex, what's going on? Oh, you get my, something on this I, thing? I may have it. It's not here, but I think I may have found it. It's over here somewhere. Okay. We might be able to pull this off. Okay. Thank goodness for computers. Right. I'm going to go look at this, and here it is. We're about to, I think we got it coming up. It's under what file? Uh, Huskies. Okay. This might be it. That's the one? Just got to get into it. And it's going to tell us how to beat Connecticut? I think so. Wow. Wait, there it is. It's underneath this. Okay. Get rid of this. That okay. might be it, Mike. All right, let me you take a look. Go down and scroll down on it. Let me take a look. Oh, no. Mike, I can't. What? What did I do? Hey, you see anything yet? What did I do? It's gone. It's gone. Everything. You idiot. the St. John's Basketball Report. I'm Mike Crispino with the coach, Brian Mahoney, and uh, we'll get to Connecticut. They're coming later in the program. First of all, let's get to Boston College. They played like an NBA franchise the other night, scored almost 100 points. What happened? You know, going into the game, our concerns were 
the way they handle the ball, their passing, and also their three-point shooting. And so we decided we're going to try a matchup zone. It's the first time we we would use it to start a game. And of course, the first possession, Howard Isley comes down and knocks in a three over Mo Brown's hand, and and it, and it just went on from there. They're a very quick team, and of course, you know those four seniors have have been together, uh, uh, played a lot of minutes together. Also, all four have been thousand-point scorers. So it's not like one guy can hurt you, but Easley's playing great. We didn't have any answers for Curly down inside, uh, Huckabee, and of course Gerard Abrams. Uh, uh, they all played very well yesterday. For pure entertainment value, if you didn't care about the results of the game, I thought Syracuse and Boston College were, were very exciting games. A lot of energy, a lot of points scored, but no wins. Well, no wins. You know, the Syracuse games is a lot of points and a uh, uh, couple of tough breaks down at the end we didn't get. Uh, and, of course, I thought Boston College maybe got us caught up up and down the court. It was their senior night also. So all, you put all those things into play, and uh, I think they have a chance to go pretty far in the tournament, especially if they, they stay healthy and they keep making those three-point shots. Getting back to Syracuse, you can't talk about this, but I can. I thought the Syracuse game was lost on an officiating call, and that's kind of been the way the whole season has gone, hasn't it? Well, you know, you think about that call, and uh, Moulton stumbles out of bounds. They call a foul on Derek. And back in January, the same thing happened to us here against Villanova, where uh, Lee Green got a deflection, went up for the steal, came down, and fell out of bounds, and there was no foul called, and they got the ball back and scored. So uh, it's one of those things. It's been a long year in that respect. Uh, hopefully uh, next year will be better. Player of the Week is starting to get to be the same old story. Like, it's very repetitive. It's Charles Midland again. Well, you're right, Mike. I think uh, the last two games, he was terrific. 28 points against Syracuse, and then last night, 25 points. So he's really upgraded his game. Offensively, and as far as effort goes, you, you can't fault this kid. No, you almost got to kill him. You know, you can't take him a prisoner. You're going to have to kill him. But uh, that's the way he works. And uh, you know what happened in January? He started to work like that in, in practice. Not that he didn't work hard in practice before, but he even raised his practice another notch, and it's an automatic carryover into the games. Charles Millen's been doing the job, and some others have been doing it for four years here at St. John's. We'll talk about the graduating seniors when we come back on the St. John's Basketball Report. People wonder. We're back, and over the course of four years, when you work with young people uh, throughout 120 games or whatever and thousands of practices, there must be some experiences that you'll never forget. And you have three seniors that uh, won't be playing anymore, of course, Chanel Scott, Lee Green, and Carl Beckett. Tell me about those guys and what kind of impact they've had on the program. Uh, I tell you, four years goes ve by very quickly, and, and of course, they do become part of your family because, you know, during the basketball season, how many hours we're together and traveling. So you, you times that by four, you really get to know people. And I, and I think with this group, I, I feel bad for them because they're going to be part of a team that, that won't go to a postseason tournament. Uh, it's the first time for them because all the previous years they, they did make it. The one thing, though, they, I, I thought they did a terrific job this year of uh, working hard, of uh, preparing for each and every game and they're going to be missed and uh, again they're going to be special people and uh, we just wish them well uh, i hope that their four years at st john's were, were meaningful and they're going to help them down the road two other seniors that a lot of folks don't know much about bill materatona and brad small won't be with the team again next year they're seniors too uh, you spent some time with them you like their practice habits an awful lot don't you really true mike you know and, and if you go back to november when we started practice we had so many nagging injuries and uh, Billy and Bradley did a, a great job helping us every day in practice. Uh, they got along well with the other, other guys and I, I think they enjoyed the experience and uh, I tell you they, they're really a part of this team and we're going to miss them greatly. Uh, having experienced senior night at Boston College recently, uh, you know the emotions that are involved with that. You had the same kind of experiences on Sunday against Syracuse. Let's take a look as Sean L. Scott, Lee Green, and Carl Beckett took their last tour around Madison Square Garden as seniors. Senior day at Madison Square Garden was a special event for walk-on Brad Small, a transfer from Syracuse who overcame academic difficulties, the marketing major from South Ozone Park now boasts a 3.7 GPA and a diploma from St. John's. Obviously being in the garden, stepping on the floor is an honor, but when you're being recognized for academics in a great sports arena like that, 
you know, 14,000 people, let's say, come and they recognize you, you know, it, it's really, it's college basketball. It's, it's hard and you have to really get into it to appreciate it. And it just felt good that I was being recognized for something, not only basketball. I put my mother through hell from, from kindergarten through my college thing, you know, to graduate. To graduate from college, I can say that I put my mother through severe hell. And finally, when I get my degree in communications, I finally, that'll be, she'll be able to pat herself on the back and she'll feel that, you know, being a single parent growing up in the South Bronx where there's drugs and violence everywhere, you know, she could feel that she's done a good job. So I told them, you know, just, just relax and, you know, you have your good days, you have your bad days. But, you know, I just told them, just hang in there, Lee. Don't worry about it. Academically, that was one of the main focuses. I really wanted him to get his academics accomplished, as long as you have that behind you. But I just told him just to relax and, you know, everything will happen for you. Education and coaching is in the future for the former manager turned 12th man, Bill Materatona. His mother was unable to make the presentation because of illness, but was very much there in spirit. Just seeing that moment, everything build up, you know, I saw my father out there, and he gave us a nice plaque, you know, and a big picture, and I just, you know, that one's for you, Dad, that one's for you, Mom, that's the way I felt. With his size and height, Sean L. Scott was expected to carry St. John's in his senior season. He did that for the most part before having his season cut short because of injury. Basketball on the professional level is still his goal. The quest began two years ago when Brian Mahoney inspired him by posting the average first and second round salaries of NBA draft picks in his locker. I guess he was trying to tell me what you want to work hard and bust your butt and be in the first round. Or do you just want to settle, you know, and play and just be in the, in the second round? What, what kind of money do you want? And uh, <laughs> one was a million dollars and one was like $150,000. So, I mean, it was just no comparison to what I wanted to do. Any regrets about your college career? Uh, really, I, really, I have no regrets. The only regret I have about playing with St. John's is um, when we played Pittsburgh, I wish I would have held on the rim and got a technical foul. It was disappointing for both of us, um, in a sense, but he had four good, long, happy years. So, you know, we're happy about that. He's accomplished a whole lot, and I'm very, very proud of him. All I can tell him that he can do anything that he sets his mind to, and he's shown us that. Mike Crispino, he'll have your job, too. <laughs> Captain Carl Beckett was enjoying Sunday's ceremonies maybe more than anyone else. After being declared academically ineligible in his junior year, the Christ the King product bounced back, all the way back, to score near-perfect straight A's in sociology. It made me feel a sense of accomplishment, feeling that I can accomplish anything I set my mind to. To be ineligible and turning that completely around is the greatest thing that I've ever done in my life at the moment. It shows that I'd, I'm not a quitter. Well, this is one of my proudest days, you know, a father can have, having a child who come up and it's been good all the way. So I'm proud, very proud today. Do you want me to... time you played Connecticut, should have won that game. Could have won that game. Didn't quite do it. Now, different story. End of the season, you guys are a little down, they're up, the top four in the country, and you got to go up there to play. Them. What do you have to do differently to compete in that environment? Well, we're going to play them in the Hartford Civic Center. It's a big place. It's about 16,000 people. And, and, of course, UConn has been the, the number one team in our conference all year. I think they've, they've been so consistent and steady. And I think of Danielle Marshall and the type of year that he's had. He's really had an All-American season. And so many people are considering him now as the national player of the year. So, but, but besides him, they have other weapons. You know, the kid Ollie in the backcourt. And the other marshal who, who probably gives them the spunk and fight that, that, that you need during the course of the season. So they are a terrific team, and uh, uh, it's going to be a real tough game for us. And next week, Big East tournament time, you're going to have either Seton Hall or Pittsburgh. You've beaten both of those teams. Does that give you some confidence going into those matchups, whatever it might well, be? Well, I, I think it's how the team feels uh, going into it. You know, it's going to be a tough game either way. We, uh, like you said, we beat both of them. Uh, Pittsburgh has been struggling recently. Uh, Seton Hall has, uh, they play that good defense, and of course with Karnishevis, he's a problem. So we just got to approach and, and give it the best effort we can. 
All right, so for Brian Mahoney and myself, Mike Crispino, thanks for joining us, everybody. will be open at least several more weeks in many areas. Will be the hospital. Open. Here we go. The first time McReynolds came to the plate today in Port St. Lucie. There it goes against Montreal in a split squad game. A three-run homer. The Mets hit four home runs today. The next time McReynolds comes to the plate. And Tim Leary whacked him behind the left ear. McReynolds never lost consciousness. He was carried off the field on a stretcher. The Mets are calling it a slight concussion. He went to the hospital for observation. The Mets say everything is okay. They'll decide around 8 o'clock tonight if they will keep him overnight. The Mets winning the game 13-3. In the Yankee-Braves game today, Matt Noakes of the Yanks homered in the eighth. He had a three-run homer in the ninth. The Yankees scored four, forcing extra innings. Then they lost to Atlanta 8-7. to you think they're happy on the St. John's campus? Last night, one of the top schoolboy basketball players in the history of the city ended the suspense and made his choice. I believe um, And today in Queens, the reaction to the announcement, after all, St. John's just completed their worst basketball season in over 30 years. I think it's great because this past season, you know, really wasn't all that great because Chanel Scott, you know, he injured his hand. So all the more reason, you know, for him to come, I think it'll be a great improvement. Coach Mahoney's a strong coach, he knows what he's doing, and these guys picked the right school to come to. It's just a great feeling. St. John's is it. Number one, baby. Is this the rebirth of Redmond basketball? I think so. Watch out. Final four next year? All the way. There you go. You heard it here first. At 6 o'clock, we will have the great and the ugly in hockey. Wayne Gretzky did set the record. But a minor league hockey game, police got involved in a hockey fight on the ice. That's all coming up at 6 o'clock. Unbelievable. Yes. All right. And when we're and talking thanks. about uh, Kevin Reynolds, it's not unusual for a batter to get beamed in a ballpark, but officials at Shea Stadium want to make sure it doesn't happen to any fans. That story is coming up. We'll also show you how the beauty and that beastly fellow she hangs around with are preparing.